click on the background there. There you go. Okay. Um, Logan's gonna talk through it. Yeah. You're all gonna listen. Or you're gonna help. Yeah, help. How uh, help. good or I like these teachers. Friday, February 28th, 2014. It is an A day. Today's lunch, fresh out of pizza, baby carrots, and fruit salad. Tomorrow's lunch, uh, Monday lunch. All right, what have you, what are some thoughts you've had so far? So, so far what we know is that the A for there is two. Okay. So, yeah. And then this is two. Yeah. And we don't know, because it wants us to find B. Yes. So you want to just put an X right in there for right now? Oh, about B. Or, oh, that works. Ooh. That's a weird B, though. You're six. Give a little tail. Looks like a six. Six, six. Yeah, I can start with six at the bottom. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, we don't know what f is. We don't know what the function is. We don't know no. like square. No. But all we do know what is f. f of x dx equals a. Yeah. And so the dx is saying basically like the derivative of f of x. Wouldn't it be? Or is that the wait? I'm thinking. Never mind. Um, well, you know, this is saying. Yeah. If we're to take the antiderivative of this and plug in b and then plug in a and subtract, you get a. Okay. Um, and this part I'm confused about when it says the average value of f on a on bracket a b yeah. is four. That's okay. What I'm confused about right now. So does anybody want to give Logan what they remember at all about average values? Yeah. Is it like? I just an average value. Remember what they remember right now. So you remember the. Is there a theorem? There's not only a theorem, but there's an analogy that I like to use for average value. Remember that? Um, the, the water! The water. Yeah, what's up? Two seconds water. The average value uh, Well, who can explain the, the water analogy? When all the water pans out and gets leveled, where would that be? And however high that water is, that's the average value. How do we do it? How do we find that? You. <coughs> Can you draw a picture and explain? A picture of like the water. <laughs> I take the water. Well, I'm just going to go over the place in my area and find the middle of the middle. Sort of. So like, draw the picture? Yeah, draw a picture of like the, the water analogy. There's some water. There's some water. There's the thing holding the water. Yeah, it's splash, splashing around in there. Yeah, yeah, it's like shaking. Yeah. It's an earthquake, and then the earthquake stops. Yeah. And then you're like, the water will be. Do you want to find the height under the curve? You want to find the height under the curve? Okay, so then we'll like grab a red maybe and then show us what the area under the curve looks like. Let's put some hash marks where to like fill in the area under the curve. Oh, you can do it. Just, just shade it in, shade in where the area under the curve is. Yeah, keep going. You go. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about that. So that's that that wave thing is represents a function f, right? Yeah, you can hand it back to Logan. Uh, how do we find the area under that curve, like mathematically, calculusly? <coughs> more exact than that. Yeah. Or more eigenvalues. Well, we, we did use rectangles, and then we evolved into. What? Fundamental theorem of calculus, yes. theorem of calculus oh, right? Which so. looks like that. It, you know, whether you use Riemann sum or you use the fundamental theorem of calculus or whatever, you're always finding this, right? That is the definite integral. That is the red stuff. Yep. Area under the curve. Yep. Okay. So go. Ahead. We got this uh, area here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, we're, and the analogy here is that when the water settles down, the water level will be here. There. Yeah. Okay. What's the same about the water as it's wavy and the water when it's settled down? It's the same amount. Same amount. Say, how do we represent amount in the situation? 
The area. The area under the curve will be the same. The area under this curve will be the same as the area in this what shape? Square. Rectangle. Rectangle. Right? So this area is this. Well, that's equal to the area in the rectangle. How do we find the area in the rectangle? Base times height. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The well, the average value is four, right? So and the average value is four. So in our case, this uh, let's just put average right here. Uh, what's this side? Two. It's two in our case. Yeah. Or or a. So a is two, and the side is b. It is b. And how do we find the, the base? The height is the average value. The base is how big? Um, oh, B minus A. A. B minus A. B minus 2. And so we can take the area. We can find it this way. Mm -hmm. We can find the area this way with B minus A. That's the base of the rectangle okay. times the average value. OK. okay. So with so there are things that we've been told, and we know what they are, and now we can solve. Yeah, so for b minus a, b, b minus 2. Yeah. And then for the average, we have 4. Yeah. <coughs> and then basically we just want to get b by itself, wouldn't we? Yeah, how are we going to get b by itself? It's not in an equation right now. No, um, we just want to. Well, what is this? When you multiply base times height, what should you get? The area. Should the area be zero? No. What is the area? Eight. 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 There you go. Okay. So we just filled in all the pieces that, that it told us. Okay. So we can divide by four. Sure. That out, yeah. divide by 4 here. So b minus 2 equals 2, and then add 2 and add 2. Yeah. So b would equal 4. Okay. Woo! Yay! 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 Tiny straight markings, of course, is that he's very fast at getting to the board. Yeah, we have 19. 19 would be the next one that we have not done yet. Or 88. 19. We're just going to go in order. There's just a few. Can you put these notes on the website so I can catch up in this Absolutely. In the, uh, in the video as well. Actually, uh, You can do it, man. Why zero? It's on that interval. Okay, great. Where did you plug in zero again? The second derivative. We plug a, a number, a, an x value to the second derivative, it'll tell us uh, the concavity. How do we know if it's concave up or down? What's negative? Well, what comes out negative? Like, oh, random function. Down. Random a random function we use. No, you use the first. 
So we use the first one. No, we use the second derivative. We use the second derivative. Second derivative, concavity. First derivative, slope. 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 Yeah. Rate of change. <laughs> so Tiny, you just, without showing your work much, you plugged in zero into the second derivative. It's not a negative six. Yeah, it'd be negative six. And then you plugged in what, two? Yeah. Plugged in two, two is 12, minus six is positive, so it's positive. I have to be the worst teacher. <laughs> Can we just do it all and be like, do you guys get that? No, all right. <laughs> okay, great. Tiny, who's next? Well, someone with Kelly. <laughs> is is there people gone? Oh, band is for girls basketball. Girls basketball is gone. And then two, I just didn't want to go to school. Idiot. My dad. Yeah, was my, my, my dad wouldn't let me this morning. He's like, you're not going to first period. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I will. I basically woke you up. You did. You here? I'm tired. I'm working. Yeah, you didn't even respond back. There you go. Oh my god. It's alright, we got a whole, well, three got, quarters of a room of people to help you. We got like an hour and a half to do it. Yeah. And they were watching numbers. That's okay, you don't really need to know anything about ellipses except for kind of what they look like. Okay? Can you remember what an ellipse looks like? Like a circle. Circle. Stretch. Well, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Is so that like the second you were So would I find the second derivative and then plug the negative one in? Certainly seems like that. Do it! Functions there, and we're and, it, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x. You can get a bigger eraser right here if you want. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Find the second derivative of a function. Take the derivative of the derivative. Derivative of the derivative. So, do we have the derivative yet? Mm, no. Maybe no. Maybe no. What? What? It would be easier if you solve for dy dx. If you solve for dy dx, mm. like it was a variable, then your next step could be taking the derivative of that. Mm. Sound familiar? Yes. Yeah. Taking the derivative implicitly, that's what you just did. Now you're, sol you're going to solve for dy dx. Not as hard as it seems. Y, it's, it's 2 times y times dy dx. If you had 2 times y times uh, m, how would you solve for m? Well, whatever you call it, you want to get this by itself. How are you going to get this by itself? Put it over there. Put it over there. Yeah. Okay, do that.
All right, so now dy dx is by itself. Yeah. To find the second derivative, equal. just take the derivative of that. Hey, no side stories. We're doing no this. <laughs> so you're going to take the derivative of that. How are you going to take the derivative of negative 4x over 2y? If you take the derivative of the left side, you just get that d squared over y. Is that one negative over dy over dx? What side of that one? No, the left side is just going to be the derivative derivative, which is the second derivative. On the right side is where we actually have to do some skills. On the left side, you just get the second derivative. On here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, right here. Yeah, on the right side. Are you going to get the, this over there as well? You will. Good thing. It's going to be OK. <laughs> you Y dx there. Yes. And then I put that in there. That? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. That Ooh, is dy smart. dx. There you go. Uh, so that does apparently. That doesn't what? Just kidding. I was just kidding. So you can just <laughs> drop that right in the place of dy dx. The second derivative. And what's the what's the question up there? What's it asking us? What is the value of the second derivative 
at the point in the third quadrant where x equals negative 1. So they want to know what is, <laughs> is the second derivative worth on the ellipse at that point. So when I plug 1 in for x, negative 1? You plug negative 1 in for x. Absolutely. <laughs> but now what? <laughs> well, you got two things that you don't know. You you've got this is what you're trying to find, right? If you were to solve for y, you'd have to know what this was. You don't know what it is. That's what you're trying to find. That? Yeah, you're trying to find the value of the second derivative. Well, I mean, it's still it's like a. You could say like f double prime of negative one. Okay. But the thing is, when you plug in negative one, can like can you run some calculations and figure out what f double prime is worth? Yeah. What do you need? Y. You need y. So oh, really, question. You need to figure out what y is. Yeah. Let me just move this over. So it, it's not just f double prime of negative 1, but of negative 1 comma whatever y is also. Can you put that negative 1 into the ellipse? OK, so we put negative 1 into the ellipse and then figure out where that point is. Here we go. Ellipse. Uh, really gives you the and time. You're doing right. x is negative 1. You're trying to figure out what y is, right? Oh, I plugged in both parts. So we're going to figure out y now. Yeah. Okay. What's y? Negative 1. Still solving for y. We're almost yeah. there. Y squared equals 9. <laughs> Plus or minus 3. Perfect. Now, when we go to plug in y, do we plug in 3 or do we plug in negative 3? Paul, you gotta figure it out. Well, it's in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, what kind of y's do we have? Positive. Negative. Third quadrant? <laughs> I just was sticking with positive. One, two, down. three, yeah. four. Third quadrant's over here, bottom left. Negative. Negative, negative y negative. values. So we must plug in? Negative three. Negative three. Oh, okay. <coughs> we love you. I'm going to grab your calculators and uh, yeah, start. Jamming away on your calculators with negative one and negative three plugged into that second derivative. Oh my God, let me get my calculator out. <laughs> well, if I could read. You have that too, Kelly. Oops. You have that Let's giant one. What? Where is it? <gasps> Race against time, Kelly. Yeah. Try. I haven't started yet. You did it. Right. There you go. Now you have to turn it on because it turns itself off. Oh my gosh. No vote. No god no way. Just press back. No back. Press back. Oh, just put a negative on top. Divide like that, it's not gonna, it's only gonna divide the minus 8 times 4 thing. There you go. 
Wow. How come no one else has gotten this first? Because they're being lazy. They're, they're just going to do it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wish I could see. I tried to do it out. You just say you wish you could, you could read? Yeah. I haven't learned. All right, okay, you did it. Point eight one four eight. Hey, wait a minute. Get your calculator back. What if, what if you look at the multiple choices and the multiple choices and fractions? You change it to fractions. How? You go to math. Uh huh. Fractions. Oh my god. You're on it. You're on it. Enter. 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 Enter again. All right. Twenty-two point seven. Twenty-two. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wish I would have written this all down. Oh gosh. Wow. Yeah, you're not gonna get that down. Yeah. All right. Who's gonna do? Oh, Kelly. We're all done, right? Well, I'm gonna turn This packet. Yeah. This packet is completed. Go us. Yeah. The new packet. Yeah. Do you want to go to the next packet? Yes. Next packet. Who's gonna question the next one? Which body is it? This packet's super nice because it tells you if you can use your calculator. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, what a step up. Let me explain it to you. It's pretty tricky. Well, there's a lot around the calculator. Don't use your calculator. Oh, oh man. Oh, no. That would have tripped me up. Okay. I've also okay. tried to highlight some things like uh, speed. When it asks a question about speed, velocity. velocity. Okay, now speed and velocity are very, very close to the same, but they're different. One has a direction. One has a direction, so which one has direction? Velocity. Velocity, which means. I don't know, just keep going. What's the, what? You can have a negative or a positive velocity. Yes, you can have a negative or a positive velocity, but speed, no. Yeah. Speed is the absolute value of the velocity, okay? What about distance? Distance. Distance here? Is. Anywhere you move, negative or positive. Mm -hmm. So it's like speed. It's like the, the difference between speed and velocity, uh, the difference between uh, distance and displacement. Right? Distance it adds all of the, 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 the directions that you move, they consider them all positive. Okay? So if you're thinking about that, if you're thinking, I gotta, I'm going to find the distance, then you got to think about do I have any distances that are negative and I need to make them positive and then you add them up like they're positive with everything else, okay? Um, and there's some challenging ones that I've put in there. They say challenge on there. Oh, that's okay. Um, these last few questions, okay? This one, this one, this one, and this one, are what's called free response, all right? The one, all the ones before that are multiple choice. I just didn't put the multiple choices on there because I want you to think harder now than you will have to on the AP test, right? Yeah. So, the free response, though, it is this is what it looks like, and you have to show your work, and you know that's how they grade you. They look through your handwritten work and grade it that way, right? So they're looking for things like plus C if you take an antiderivative, and they're looking for you know all of these little things. Showing your work. All the little details. Um, so I'm gonna hand these out. So you did 11? Okay, 11. Let's see, did that real quick. Okay, so the limit as x approaches infinity, and that is what? You just, oh, did you want me to explain how to do it? Well, first tell me what it is, and then you can explain. Oh, you have to find if, if x approaches infinity, what? Yeah, what number would it yeah. approach? Yeah. 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 Um, so you look at the leading. Degree, Maybe. yeah, that word. Leading degrees, which is x squared and negative four x squared. Yeah. Since they're the same, you look at the number of plus, so mm -hmm. the negative one plus. Very good. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I'll do ten. Well, ten. Okay. So you did ten. Yeah. Okay. How did you do this? Uh, I changed the um, x. Uh, what do you call it? X squared. To the x to the one half. half. Yes. To x yeah. to the one half, and then I distribute that. Distribute that, so you got x to the? Uh, three fourths, or <laughs> three halves. Three halves, minus? Uh, or minus x to the one half. Of course, you get the bx. And there. that's um, two fifths x to the five halves. So you just add one to the exponent and then multiply by the reciprocal. Minus um, two 
two thirds x to the three halves. Plus c. Plus c. Okay. Uh, uh, Logan, what, what do you have? What's, what do you have? Oh, um, that uh, that you did. Yeah. You feel like you could just uh, walk um, through it real quick. Um, I I did twenty three, but I don't. I was kind of confused about it at the same time. Okay. <coughs> so for this, is it basically asking like, can I think like f of b minus f of a when it's saying from time t equals 0 to time t equals 10. So like, so you're thinking you'll do f of b minus f of a? Yeah, which, okay. like it's like 2000b negative uh, 0 0.2 times 10. Okay, you plug in 10, you plug in 0, and you subtract? Yeah. Um, well, what do you guys think? This is where we gotta think about what they're giving us, what they're asking for, yeah. and then think, like, keep a clear connection in our brains about uh, functions, their derivatives, and their second derivatives. Or a function that is the derivative and the antiderivative of that. You gotta keep, like, if you keep in your mind uh, three functions, a mm -hmm. function, the derivative, and the derivative of the derivative, uh, and, and think about how those, those all relate to each other, it's really helpful, okay? So we have an original function, which is about a, a, a single, um, like, measurable amount that you can measure from, like, a, a picture. Like, the number of people, the number of gallons, the number of miles, the yeah. distance, the, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you could take a snapshot of it and say, well, that's that many people, it's that far, it's that many gallons, it's like that distance, whatever. Mm -hmm. Kind of a static measurement. Okay. But once you take the derivative of that, you're talking about velocity, you're talking about how many gallons per minute, you're talking about how many people per hour, you're talking about a rate. Right? Okay. And then the last one you're talking about like an acceleration, you're talking about how fast is the rate at which that thing is changing, changing. Right? Yeah. How fast is the velocity changing, how fast is the rate at which people are showing up changing, how fast is the rate at which the gallons is leaking changing. Okay, okay. so what we have, is that oil is leaking from a tanker at the rate of such and such. Okay. okay. So if I plug in 10, that's going to tell me how fast it's coming out. Yeah. Right? Uh, gallons per hour, where T is measured in hours. How much oil, do you see how they're different things? Yeah. This is uh, how fast it's coming out. This is the rate. Yeah. And this would be just how many gallons. Okay. So if, if this is R of T, which is the rate at which it's, it's coming out, and, and we want to know how many, how much oil, so gallons, so like mm -hmm. gallons, like how many gallons have leaked out at any time? Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between G of T and R of T? Um, Wouldn't the R risk would be like the derivative? The derivative of G, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, had it backwards. You take the derivative of G, you get R. Yeah. Um, so, if what I want to know is about how much oil leaks out, I want to know about values of G of T. Okay. Right? Yeah. How do I, how do I go from R of T to G of T? The antiderivative. The antiderivative. Okay. Okay. So, we take the antiderivative of this. Of 2000 E to the negative. Uh, from 0 to 10, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. Right? Because what are we going to do? We would take the antiderivative. We would find out um, how many gallons there were at 10 hours, how many gallons there were at 0 hours, and subtract. Yeah. Right? Find those three calculus. So, yeah, it is f of b minus f of a, but what f was yeah. you were mistaken about. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. Does that all make sense? Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes, yes, that was good. Okay. You get it? Think about that the, the function that you have and what they're asking. Are they asking you the rate? 
Are they asking you how fast the rate is changing? Do I look at what I see further than that? Are they asking you about how many? There's a lot of questions like this. The rate that something's changing is given, and then how many gallons, how far they traveled, how many people showed up, those, those measurements, those static measurements is what they ask about. So you often will have to take the antiderivative. Okay. okay, so first we want to find the, let's, let's not worry about the limits at the moment, let's find the antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of 2000 e to the negative 0.2 t? Um. You take the Next thing is the exact same thing. Right, so, thing so this exact. must have in it an e to the negative point yeah. two t. Yeah. And we should have a dt right here. Okay, so if we were to take the derivative of this, we would get e to the negative point two t. Then what would be next? Um, chain rule, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. times. Uh, zero point two? Negative? Negative zero. Negative zero point two. Okay. That would be it, right? Yeah. Well, we need to wind up with two thousand. So what should also be here, so when we multiply by negative point two, we wind up with two thousand. Uh, this would be so when we multiply it by negative point two, we get two thousand. Why do we need to get two thousand? Because this is the function that you get mm -hmm. when you take the derivative of the oh. antiderivative. Ten thousand? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand? You can't use your calculator. Oh no, it is ten thousand. Yeah. Negative ten thousand? So if we multiply negative ten thousand by negative point two, we get two thousand? Negative 10,000 should be there so that when we take the derivative and we multiply by negative 0.2 because we use the chain rule, when we multiply negative 0.2 by 10,000, we get the 2,000, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind of working backwards. Finding a function that when you take the derivative, you get this. That's the antiderivative it is. All right, so let's maybe reorder this a little bit. And I'm trying to erase that whole thing and put negative 10,000 out in front. And then one last time, we'll verify that this is the antiderivative. Take the antiderivative of this, we're going to have negative 10,000 times the derivative of this, which is itself, times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 0.2. Negative 0.2 times negative 10,000 will give us the 2,000 that we have here. Okay. Good. So now we have the antiderivative. What are we going to do with it? We're going to use the... Calculus, right? Because what we're really doing is going from ten. So we're going to take this ten from that notation. It means we're going to apply the federal federal calculus where a is zero and b is ten. Negative ten thousand times e to negative point two times ten minus negative ten thousand times e to the negative point two times. saying that, that oil is leaking from a tanker at a rate of, a rate, which implies it's the derivative of some function, right? It's the derivative of a function, well, since this is the rate of change of gallons per hour, it must be the derivative of something that tells us how many gallons are present at a given number of hours. So we could call that function g of t for the one that tells us how many gallons there are at any time. Um, <coughs> so that function is negative 10,000 times e to the negative 0.2t plus some constant that we don't know. So that's the, the, the derivative of that? We take the derivative of this, we get this. We can call this r of t, we can call this g prime of t, it's the same thing. Okay. We've got 
because the, the ROT is how fast that gallon, the, the gallons is changing. Yeah. Okay. Earlier we talked about full flight drive. Yeah. We're we're just we were taking the answer derivative. Yeah. And to figure out what the answer derivative was, we were taking the derivative of this to make sure we got back to that. So you don't need well, we do need to, when we're taking the derivative of it, to make sure that this no, is. No, I mean, just for the antiderivative, that doesn't need to be in there. Just for the antiderivative? It doesn't need to be there as long as when we do take the derivative of this, we get that. Yeah. yeah. Question. So, uh, when you're taking, you know, that first step, 10, you know, can't you put the 2,000 in front because it's a constant? Or it's like in a multiple or whatever? You can put it outside of the derivative or something? Uh, the the antiderivative? Yeah, the antiderivative. Yeah, you can do that too. There's a rule. Yeah, there's some <laughs> sort of rule. You can do that too. Where? Okay, and you can put the point. No, you can't. It would come out the same. But you can do that. I kept saying derivative, I was saying make sure that when we take the derivative of this, yeah. it gets us that, because that's the definition of an antiderivative. Okay. Did we only learn how to take the antiderivatives of like the E and then the natural logs and stuff? We know how to take the antiderivatives of, of, of E to the U, of, uh, of we X, also how to do derivatives of, them? I can't. of E to the X, yeah. We can take the derivative, the derivatives of E to the X, the antiderivative of E to the X, that that works out because u of the x is its own derivative. We also learned how to take the derivative of the natural log, which is yeah. 1 over whatever, times you know whatever for the, the chain rule. And then we learned to take the antiderivative of stuff that looks like 1 over function, or the derivative over the function. Um, OK, so we got negative 10,000 times e to the uh, negative Two, right? Negative two. Yeah. Yeah. Negative two. Um, plus, what's e to the zero? One. One. So this is minus ten thousand. Yeah. When did we plus ten thousand? Or sorry, yeah, plus. We already made that plus. Plus ten thousand. So plus ten thousand. And. You're just looking for a multiple choice that's equivalent to that. Maybe they have e in the denominator. Maybe they just factored out 10,000s from both and got negative e to the negative 2 plus 1. Uh, who knows what they have? you got to look for an equivalent uh, statement. Yeah, is that all that? Mm -hmm. Could I stop right the 10,000 e negative 2? Basically, it was just me saying the same thing with the 10,000 is 2,000. Yeah. Because I forgot to do that. Yeah. Kind of a, a coincidence because e to the x is the derivative of that is e to the x. So, yeah, we need to take the antiderivative of that first. Um, as, we, as you do more of those and you keep in mind that they might, get, they tell, they might tell me basically what the derivative of some function look at the original function, well, I gotta go backwards from the derivative, I gotta go inside. Okay. Uh, what's another one that somebody did that they felt like was pretty straightforward? 21. 21? Okay. So the graphs of five functions are shown, which has a non-zero average value. Okay. So, what does that mean, Titan? Non-zero average value. Where's the average value? Not equal zero. Okay. So which one did you choose? You chose E, and how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, because you can tell that it's a lot more negative. So I can be equal zero. So there's a lot more negative values than positive values, and so the average will wind up being down here. Yeah. Okay. If you think of the the, the water analogy, if you if you like, but. There's just as much water up here as there is down here, or as just as much area as there is 
up here than there, so the area of total will be zero. And when you find the average of zero, it'll be zero. Right? Just as much area here as negative area here. You can see this is a, a symmetrical graph. It looks like the cosine. And so this is the same as this, but they, they cancel each other out. These cancel each other out. They cancel out. There's a lot more negative area than positive area here. Good. Good job, Sam. Thank you. Yeah. Next. I felt like that was pretty simple. Okay. What is the average rate of change of the function in the closed interval zero to three? All right, what'd you do? You did what? The definite integral of this. Okay, so the definite integral from 0 to 3 yeah. of x to the 4th minus 5x yeah. dx. And why did you do this? Uh -huh. So you... I don't really have a reason. Because you saw the words interval and... And a function? Yeah. Okay. Is it right? Can we use Well, no. Means it wants the oh, rate. Oh, average rate. And then I and I can put the fundamental theorem of calculus on something. Use the average. So you did the fundamental theorem of calculus yeah. on this. So you took the antiderivative. You got one fifth x to the fifth minus. Uh, 5 6 x to the 6th from 0 3. What? What's the what? 5 over 2. Oh, I don't know why I saw power of 5 there, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 5 halves x to the 2nd. And you plug in 3 and you plug in 0. Okay, what'd you get for that? 26.1 was this, when you did the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then what'd you do? That's it? Multiplying by the uh, B minus A. Multiply by B minus A? Yeah. Right, from the average. Well, if we took 26.1 and divided by B minus A, which would be 3, 3 minus 0 would be 3, what would that give us? You give us the average value of this function. It wouldn't give us the average rate of change of this function. How do you know to take the Um well you should have. So is it the derivative? How would so what would you do to remember? So you took the derivative of this. Let me see if I can. Um, Yeah. 